All right, so I'm going to walk through how to create a new Zapier integration or custom Zapier app for your Bubble application. Right now I have this Enrichly application that I'm working on. Um, I have this backend workflow that is set to hit an API from a data source that we are using where basically it allows users to input an email address and we go enrich that email address and bring back um, lots of great information about that person if our data source has it available and then it adds it to this team's CRM in bubble if we look back here we have people and you can see that for example Savannah Woods here and we have all of her information so all of this started with just a simple email input um, somewhere here yeah here in this email list so all I did was put in her email and it returned all this information, including her LinkedIn URL, uh, username, company, company name, all sorts of good information. So this is a great tool for enriching leads as they come into your CRM or enriching contacts if they schedule a call with you, different things like that. And so actually I'll quickly show you what it looks like in the app, but if we open it up, Basically, we want to make this functionality available through Zapier so that people don't have to log into the app every time they want to use it. So on this Enrich tab, we have the person CRM. Let me go ahead and delete Savannah from over here and we can see how it works. So here we basically take this email input. Anna is my girlfriend and hopefully she doesn't mind that I use her email. She'll probably never see this video anyway. But um, so it all starts with an email input. When we click enrich, it goes out, runs that back into workflow and enriches the data and then adds it to the CRM here. If we wait just a second. All right, so now we see that Savannah has come into our CRM. We don't have all of her information, her email and phone are missing. But if we open up her profile, we can see lots of good information in here about her. And actually her email is in this list of personal emails. It just did not come through as her main work email. So that's an example of how this is working from the uh, UI side of things from the front end. And so now we're going to build a Zapier integration that allows people to pass in that email and add them to their CRM or use that data you know, to enrich HubSpot or other CRMs that they may be using. So we'll start over here in Zapier. It all starts with created a new integration. All right, now that our app is created, we start by setting up the authentication. So Zapier makes it pretty easy to walk through, although it can get a little confusing when connecting to Bubble. So hopefully this video, um, I don't run into too many issues. I've done this once in the past and this is my second attempt. So to connect authentication to Bubble, we'll use OAuth v2. So we'll go ahead and select that, go to next. And then we don't need to worry about authentication fields for now. So we'll go ahead and skip that, jump down to step two. So we need this OAuth redirect. So here, if I remember correctly, we will go into bubble, go into the settings. I believe it's under domain email. No nope, general, no nope, API, aha. So on the third party OAuth or SAML access, we are going to redirect logins to the index page because that is our login page. And then we'll add a new third party app. We'll call this and well, and originally redirect URI. So this is what we get from Zapier and it provides us with the client ID and client secret. So we'll need to go back over here to we'll continue that. Enter your application credentials. So client ID and the client secret will go here. Let's go ahead and save that. What we can do also, actually let's go ahead and do this. Um, we'll save these to the apps variables. So let me minimize myself here. I believe it's under advanced. Yep. 
Ah, look at that. It already saved them for us. And so now we can go over here, go to application credentials. We can simply reference these variables through this code. All right, and then endpoint for configuration. So this is where it can get a little tricky. Um, it's not difficult, but it can be a little confusing. So to authenticate, we will need to send them to the auth page. So the auth URL is going to be your app's base URL, and then it's going to be an endpoint of OAuth slash authorize. So I copied this base URL. I'm going to save this. Actually, I'll just go ahead over here to advanced, and we're going to add base URL URL here, and then we'll get this from here. And we'll jump back over here put the value in. So this is our bubble application URL, and we're going to cut it off after the API 1.1, and we will not include that trailing slash. So that is our base URL. Now if we jump back over to OAuth, we will put in the OAuth slash authorize. Hold on. There we go. So we'll reference that URL and then I need to add that in there. And then under the options, we're going to need a few things. So actually it already set it up for us. So it's already passing in the client ID, state, redirect URI, and response type. So we should not have to do anything else here. If we scroll down to scope, we're not going to worry about that. The access token request. So we're going to do the same thing. This will be a post request to the base URL OAuth access token. And so here, let's check the options underneath. Those look good to me. And so now this is where it goes out and gets the access token for this user. And then the refresh token will be the same URL. OAuth access token. Need to make sure I add that there. And the options are refresh, keep them as default. And then the test, this is where you will set up a backend workflow. This is where the first backend workflow comes in. You'll need to do a post request to your base URL with workflow, meaning you're going to trigger a backend workflow. And we will create a workflow called me that will simply return um, the current user's information. So we don't need to add anything down here. Um, something that I found is helpful. If you take this code here, what this does is it takes the data that's returned by bubble and it parses out that user's email and it will display this as the connection in Zapier so that they know which account they're connected to when they go to um, you know, set up their triggers or actions. So now we're going to hop over to Bubble. I'm going to have to save this so we don't lose it. I'll hop over to Bubble and go to the backend workflows. And we're going to go to Enrichly folder just to keep things clean. And we'll create a new API workflow called me. And it is a public workflow, but uh, it should not be able to be run without authentication because the goal here is to test that everything we've set up so far is authenticating the user. So. We're just going to return data from an API, add another parameter. Let's call it, what did we call it over here? User, we'll just call it user. I don't think this matters very much. And then we will return current user. So let's see how this goes. If this doesn't work, I will pause, figure it out, and come back. So we'll go ahead and save that again, just in case. Now we'll test it. So this is testing the sign in to Enrichly functionality that your users will be using when they you know, connect to their Enrichly account. So it opens up, invalid client ID. All right, 
Let me just pause this for a second and I will come back. Uh, so what happened here was when I changed the values in the OAuth, it updated the variable values here. So we'll just go ahead and get those back from bubble, get the client ID and the, oh, that's not the whole thing. The client secret. We'll go ahead and save that. And now let's give it a test. All right, sweet. And so since I'm already logged in over here, it automatically logged me in. But just to show you guys how it works here, let me log out of this session. And we will retest it over there. So I'm currently logged out. I know my login information. So I'm going to add a new account. It should pop up to the login page. And log in here. Awesome. So this is where it returned my email from my current user. And then we'll go ahead and test the authentication because now it says my account is connected, but this test will run that um, backend workflow called me. Let me. Go ahead and make that blue for my OCD. And if we test it, we'll see what happens. Test successful. So here is all of my user information. We can see my user email, email confirmed, my bubble ID, and all the other user variables that are associated with my account, as well as you know, things like my profile picture, um, last login date, all the good information that is stored in my bubble account. And so now my authentication is officially working. Next, I will go into some triggers and actions, but I will make a separate video about that.